studio really is just a state of mind and a strong creative mindset, strong state of mind is central, absolutely crucial for any creative to thrive. And in challenging times, there are a lot of things that can get in the way of that happening. There are a lot of things that can get in the way of your focus and can actually shatter our mindset, can really throw our inner game off. I've heard students talking about not feeling motivated to pick up a brush or not being able to actually even get their paints out, not sure of what to paint and, or having the physical problem of having everybody at home all around all the time, no time and space for yourself and the feeling of not being able to get away and reclaim your own time, your own headspace in order to be creative, in order to make art. The thing to remember is that in order to develop your own painting practice or any other creative practice for that matter, you've got to create a space of your own to work. And it's both a physical space and a mental emotional space, the head space, that inner game that I was talking about. Lots of people get all hung up on the physical space. It's not the most important thing. And the chances are, that's probably a good chunk of what's getting in your way right now. That's not the most important part. The most important part, hands down, is that mental emotional space. And how do you go about cultivating it? You do it through discipline. Because having a framework, having a routine, having a discipline gives you a creative freedom to move and express yourself. So how do you go about creating that? How do you create the discipline? Number one, I've got about five or six different um, suggestions here for you. Number one, and this is really, really important. You have to calm your mind. You cannot focus unless your mind is calm. So in order to calm your mind, you can do things like meditation. There are some great apps out there like Headspace and Calm. Headspace is a subscription one. Calm is a free one that's in the app store. But you don't have to have an app in order to meditate. You just need to sit, be still, quiet your mind, listen to your thoughts, and let them go. Letting go is crucial. So you have to calm your mind. You can walk. Walking, moving, exercise helps tremendously, but walking just to calm your mind can be important. It's not about power walking. It's not about how many steps you cover. It is about the rhythmic movement and kind of sauntering along in order to give yourself some inner stillness. Practice yoga. Yoga helps tremendously because, again, it's about releasing and calming your mind, letting your thoughts go. So calming your mind is number one on my list. Number two, this is pretty much just as important. Limit your time watching the news. I know we all need to be informed now more than ever, but you don't need to be digesting, ingesting the news from multiple sources like television, cable TV, Facebook, Twitter, all of those sources that are out there 24-7. That's not good for you. It takes up all the space in your head. So give yourself an information diet. Limit how much time you spend consuming news. You'll find that your attitude shifts tremendously. So if you're feeling anxious, turn the news volume down tremendously. Number three, exercise every day. You got to get up and do something. Move your feet. Even if you are working out in the house, you've got a treadmill, or you're just taking walking steps in the house, or you are doing yoga in the house. But do something for exercise. Again, I've talked about this before, it burns off cortisol. Cortisol is one of the things that makes us anxious. Here we're getting down to the nitty gritty, and I'm gonna talk about grit a lot. Grit goes along with discipline, and we all gotta get some grit. So it's the stiffener that holds us upright when the going gets tough. So you gotta get some discipline going and you gotta get some grit. 
Where do you get the grit? You get the grit by creating a new routine. So the old routine may be shot for right now. Create a new one. Create a routine that matches the circumstances that you're in right now. So get out a piece of paper, plot out your day tomorrow, and make sure it includes some of the things I talked about earlier, like things that will calm your mind, some exercise, getting enough sleep. You got to get those eight hours in. Sleep is the, the underutilized resource. But you got to make some time for yourself and your art as well. And I know lots of people have kids at home. Lots of people have lots of other responsibilities. Lots of people are trying to work still. I know I am. While we are in our, our new set of circumstances, routine will help that. Map out how you're going to include these things into your day. Get a new routine and structure going so that you can find some freedom. It takes grit to do that. Grit is determination. Exercise it and it gets easier every single time, but get that routine going. It's super important, y'all. Only paint on the days that you eat. Does that mean you need to be painting the Mona Lisa right now? I don't, don't think so, probably not. Although you could be Shakespeare and go out and write King Lear right now. You know, that's what he did during the plague when he was alive. But if you're not feeling up to King Lear status or the Mona Lisa, how about let's looking for the extraordinary and the ordinary. I've talked about that before. Get a pencil, get your sketchbook, add sketchbook time to your routine. Don't have time to get the paints out, get your sketchbook out. Look for something in your everyday ordinary life every single day that is beautiful. Look for that beauty. Because when you start looking for that beauty, the beauty will find you. And it will help you create that new routine. So you don't have time to paint right now. I hear you. Get the sketchbook out. You got kids at home. I hear you. Go in the bathroom to draw. Sit on the edge of the tub and draw. I only have five minutes. Five minutes is fine. Take it. Run with it but you got to get that routine going. I'm giving you some, a gentle shove here because you got to exercise that grit muscle. It is the only way forward. So create a routine, exercise grit, and start looking for that extraordinary in the ordinary. Remember that when you do that, when you just get started, your new routine will create itself. But you gotta map it out and take those first steps. And they'll feel awkward at first, but you can absolutely get there. So make something that finds the extraordinary in the ordinary. It can be um, something as mundane as your cup of coffee with the steam rising out of it in the morning. It doesn't matter. It's the act of looking at it in a new way that makes it extraordinary. Share it into the Facebook group, into the Artwork Living Facebook group. Tag it that so that we know you're working on that. But let's get this new routine going in order to reclaim our inner game. It's what will move us forward as artists. Happy painting, everybody. I hope this helps. And I'm going to drop into the chat roll right now into the comments just to catch a few and see if anybody has any questions there. So dive in there and let's see. Let me see if I can get that to pull up. It's hiding my comments from me again, as per usual. Bless Facebook's little heart. Let me know what extraordinary you found in the ordinary lately. Hey, Beverly, it's good to see you and Gabrielle. Hey, Tom Howard, I'm giving you a kick in the pants. Get out there and paint, my friend. And Barbara, I love that. You said you made a list. That's exactly what you need to do. Make a list of the things that can get you into that new routine. Start making a list of things that are ordinary that you can examine to find the extraordinary in. Get out there and start painting them because that's the only way to find your new footsteps forward. We can build the grit, grit's a muscle, and we can exercise it. 
So hope that helps. Happy painting, everybody. Bye-bye for now.